morning, everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I hope you guys are all doing well this morning. It is Wednesday morning, and I'm, I'm a little bit late, but not much. And hopefully you guys are out there. I'm going to wait a few minutes here and uh, see if there's a couple of you that can join me. But those of you that might be joining me on Good Morning Chad, <laughs> those of you that are joining me um, after the fact, please enjoy the video, comment. You are welcome to leave comments, your thoughts. Um, I ask a lot of questions through these, so please don't hesitate to share because you're just as important as my live audience and I will be notified when you leave comments and will respond. And um, just enjoy getting to know you all. This has been a lot of fun. I look forward to this every Wednesday and uh, I hope you guys are doing really well. Um, I wanted to touch base today and see, good morning Jill, wanted to see how you guys are doing so far. You know, we have been talking about living with intention and being true to ourselves. How are you guys doing with that? You know, as we talked about, those two, two particular topics in our life lead to our success. I really believe that. Um, I've had two bigger circumstances in my life the last two weeks that have, good morning Michelle, that have made me be tr more true to myself and every day I am thoroughly enjoying living with intention. It just feels good to be in control of my schedule for once um, and um, it, it just feels good to also be true to myself. You know, you don't realize how extremely important that is in our lives, is being true to ourselves, because I really believe that internally, when we are not true to ourselves and what our deepest desires are and what we stand for, um, I feel that internally we are letting ourselves down. And it, it does affect us more than we realize. And I can say that because of the two experiences that I've had the last two weeks. It gives you a bolder, not a cocky, not a, um, it's a humble feeling of appreciation that you are standing on your own two feet and you're standing for what you believe in. So I want to continue to encourage you guys regardless what topics we discover, what topics we are talking about, that you are living with intention and that you are being true to yourself. So my question to you this morning, there's a couple of you on, how are you doing? Are you getting organized? Are you living with intention? Are you being true to yourself? Are you seeing results? Um, are you finding through this process your joy and your happiness? So that's my question to you. Even the few of you that are out there, um, I would love some answers. I would love your feedback. And those of you watching after the fact, please share that with me. Um, because uh, like I said in my newsletter this past Sunday, this is a time of year where life starts to take over. Things started off on a grand plan a grand mission and you were doing really well and you had lots of motivation and then life happens life takes over stuff happens sickness uh, finances chaos it all it all comes to all of our lives very good Jill okay Jill says she did a dump run um, this week on on her goals and getting organized so she she did a good brain dump and just let it all out there and really guys when you do that that's when you're you're really kind of listening to yourself, um, where you are really just digging in, and and once you start, your inner self, your Holy Spirit, your um, total mind gets involved in in what your desires are, and that's really important to know, um, not just for organization, but for um, being true to yourself and living with intention. So that that's fantastic, Jill. And did it help? I'm sure it did. So, good morning, Ashley. Oh, Ashley's got one of the most contagious, beautiful smiles and, and is such a positive person. She is one of my, my focal people for positivity. Just thought I'd share that. She jumped, woohoo! How fun was that? My chair just let loose. I'm going to bring it back up here. <laughs> there is never a dull moment in my home, so that just adds to it. And that was a perfect cue in to my next <laughs> my next topic of today. Slowly but surely, I'm getting more organized. Awesome, Chad. Baby steps. 
baby steps. It's like riding a bike. You start with a tricycle, you then ex you know expand to your bike with training wheels, and then you just start rolling. So baby steps, that's awesome. Okay, and now the funny thing is with my chair falling and me laughing, the next thing is our joy and our happiness. Yes, baby steps are key, Michelle, and that is so true. So true in anything we do. You know, the objective is not to be so busy and overwhelmed in our lives. It's to be organized and happy. And organization creates our happiness because we're not living in chaos. So I will continue to, we are going to just, everything we do this year, there will be a level of organization involved. Trust me, because if there is not organization in the things I do, I can't deal with the chaos. I don't have time to deal with the chaos. And I don't want, that's the key thing, I don't want to deal with the chaos. And I don't want you guys to deal with the chaos anymore either. So now, the next thing is our joy and our happiness. And feel free to keep sharing. Um, if I'm going too fast, you know, still slow me up and share your thoughts. Um, but joy and happiness are huge. And I have a, a resource today. I was given this book to re review, and it sounded like so perfect for me. Um, this is The Ever-Loving Essence, oh, my bright light, The Ever-Loving Essence of You. And uh, there's a link in the description below. Create a long-term connection relationship with yourself. That sounds really weird to many people. But I've talked about it before, that my relationship in my life, my relationships, are God first and then me. Me, not in a selfish way. Me in that I am wanting to be the best me that I can be. So the more I take care of myself and the more I focus on me, my joy and my happiness, the better I can be for my husband, my family, my friends, and the people I come in contact with. So um, I was excited to get this. Uh, Jamie Lerner and Lauren Targ wrote this book, and you can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash uh, Jamie Lerner. Sorry, I zoned there for a second. But um, And I mentioned to you guys before that I have this uh, coping mechanism I always thought it was, but actually it's more than that. Um, when, when adversity sets in and when struggles happen and when everything starts breaking, um, the last thing my husband wants is for me to be laughing. However, that has been a con conversion point in our home in that that is my coping mechanism. I've gone through a lot of things in my life and it is a choice for us when we go through a hard spot to be stuck in it in a negative way or to find the bright shiny penny, the blessings and, and be joyful and happy. And laughter is a key to that gateway. And I have an extreme tendency, my poor husband, but he has joined me in this process. And but. Four years ago, um, we were we were building a sawmill and or working on the sawmill. Everything was breaking. The backhoe was breaking. Everything was breaking. And my husband came in here, and he's ready to land on his knees and just let it all out. He was just he was done, and I just started laughing, and and it infuriated him. But he's learned through my process that you know what we have the choice to laugh or cry. And I'll be darned if I'm going to sit there and cry because something broke. I'm not letting it break me. I've just gotten to that point and I laugh. And you know what? Laughter is such a tremendous, contagious thing. And it can turn any, just like music. Laughter and music can turn any environment from a negative to a positive, if you allow it. If you allow it. So I want to read just a couple things out of... Um, the ever-loving essence of you. Um, one thing that resonated to me is there have been numerous studies which support and substantiate the evidence that when we are experiencing joy, creating joy, choosing joy, or sending thoughts and feelings of joy to another, we are releasing endorphins and changing the chemistry of our brain. So we have the abilities to do a lot of things for ourselves. It's all if we choose. And it is such a great feeling to be happy instead of miserable. Uh, there are so many instances I could have chose unhappiness, and I, I chose the opposite, you know, and it's it's just, it's so important, and it's so life-changing, and it's something that's going to push you forward. 
The other thing is it says here, it's a quote from James Perez, the author of The Awakening Joy. Sometimes just changing your face and your body language can create more space in your mind. Laughter is a real aid to bring about that spaciousness. So when you're at your wit's end, you know, uh, when I, I was in sales previously, and they always said that when you, when you had to make a call and you weren't in the right mindset to look in front of a mirror and smile or stand in front of a mirror and smile while you're on the phone call, that does work, guys. You know, you can turn yourself around by simply looking in the mirror and smiling at yourself. So the other thing that really resonated to me is humor can be subjective, but laughter is a universal language. Welcome to my zoo. Things may break loose here. Bear with me. Laughter connects people with their humanity. It is uplifting and gives warmth. It improves the um, physiological well-being of people living through traumatic circumstances such as wars and natural disasters. To laugh at a time when you are distressed is not to down or sidestep the emotional connect content, but to gain the clarity in order to make the experience productive. So in other words, we're clearing our minds to not be in a stuck location and, and opening our thoughts to just continue working through what is extremely rough. So I just want to encourage you guys to find your joy and your happiness through this process because the happier and more joyful you are, the more productive and organized you will be. And I did include two Bible verses in um, the description as well for my Christian audience. Romans 15, 13 says that I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. The other one is, one of, it's, it's on a wooden old piece of barn board in my bedroom above my bed. And it is something that I've hung on to and and um, am thankful for with the mountain man. But I'm going to extend that to you today as well. And it's Philippians 1.3. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. You know, this process is something that we don't have to do alone. You know, we live here on our homestead and we don't leave much. We could become hermits. We could become, you know, um, someone that's not leaving an imprint on this world. We could be to ourselves and not, uh, you know, uh, communicate with people and, and not leave our mark. And it's not that I'm out to leave a mark. It's that I'm out to change lives. I've gone through some rough experiences and I know what it's like and I don't want other people to be alone and suffering and struggling. I don't want people to be living life unprepared and struggling and I don't want people to be living disorganized and living such a dreadful life because they don't know how to get themselves organized. And I want to teach people the skills they need that if something were to happen in this world that you know how to survive regardless of what the circumstances are and that includes laughter. So I'm I'm choosing to leave my mark in a different way. I may not leave my homestead very often, but I get to enjoy your company and the pleasures of your comments and getting to know you every Wednesday and sharing what I know with you. And in turn, you guys share what you know with me. We can help each other. But I just feel very led. I feel like I have stepped into the doorway this year of where I'm truly supposed to be. And I'm, I'm enjoying living truly with intention and true to myself and true to Jesus. And not faltering on those things is making me feel very humbly bold. Bold to share with you what I'm learning, not to wear a mask and be afraid that what I'm saying is going to offend people or, or uh, turn people away. I, I want to share what I know and share the joys and happiness that life can bring you even through the roughest of circumstances. So how are you guys doing? What are some things you have learned through this process? What are some things that you want to gain? Um, what are some topics that you would like me to touch on as we progress? Because I believe it was Jill um, the other week that had asked for some um, information and there have been some others that have reached out to me. Um, what are some topics that you that you would like more information on? I am happy to share and I want to be able to help you guys along on your journey. And then I have a funny thing I want to share with you um, before we, we close today. But share some things with me. What are what are you guys looking to achieve this year? What is your biggest goal? Anything. Share Share some stuff with me, guys.
And I do encourage you to check out this book. This is not a um, long read. I read this Saturday and Sunday, and there are a lot of takeaways, a lot of takeaways. And um, the importance of that book, so that I don't downgrade that book or forget to mention this, is that it teaches you to improve your self-image and your um, story. You know, we all have rough spots, but some of us get stuck in them, and this is a great book that gives you some techniques on how to get out of those spots and to keep moving in life, and um, it's very well written. Okay, Jill asks, do you have a trick on how to live, enjoy the moment, rather than only seeing what is left to do? Yes, absolutely. Um, the trick is just um, to roll. Um, when you have interruptions, consider them divine interruptions. You know, oftentimes my husband will come in to show me something. Uh, my son will um, have something to share with me. And I might be in the midst of things, but I'm learning that, you know what, that is a divine interruption. My husband just worked really hard in the smithy, and he has an amazing new product or knife or something that he is so gifted to do, it would be really wrong of me to be like, you know, hey, I'm busy, I don't have time for you. You know, I think that the interruptions that we experience in life sometimes are meant to be there. Um, sometimes we don't take enough time away um, and we're drilling ourselves with our schedule and allowing our schedule to own us. So learn, learn to roll. And, and learn to take those interruptions um, for what they are. You know, sometimes you might have an emergency that really pulls you away, but I, I think everything happens for a reason. You know, there have been times, I'll just give you this example. I'm on the way to an appointment, and it's an important appointment, but, you know, roads close, something happens, or suddenly I feel like I learn to go with your gut, too. You know, you feel the need to not stay on the same path. You know, for some reason you, you're feeling so strongly led to go a different direction or something, or the road is closed or whatever, and you end up late to your meeting, and then later in the day you find out there was a nasty accident or the road collapsed in front of you or something weird like that. You know, your inner um, voice, which I feel is your Holy Spirit, will tell you a lot of things and... Um, we have to be willing to listen to it. You know that gut feeling you get and a lot of times you don't listen to it and then you say, well, I had that gut feeling and I should have listened. Just learn to listen to it. Learn to listen to it. Learn to shift in your, the shifts in your schedule might have divine purpose. There's a reason for it. Um, you know, you got, you, you had to stop and change a tire and in so you met a person that's leading you to the next level of your life. Um, the next, you know, next thing, the next door to open. So... I hope that you know that explains it. Um, Chad, you just said something, and I'm sorry I missed it. I'm going to see if I can't open this in my on my iPad so I can see your message because I know it was lengthy and I wanted to see that. Um, Jill is saying I was thinking more along the line of finishing a large project, and rather than giving myself a moment to give myself a pat on the back for getting something done, and all I can see is the project left to do. Okay, there's more, but it, it's not showing me. Um, stop and cheer. Stop and give yourself that pat on the back. And recognize the fact that um, you're filling yourself with joy. And, and that pat on the back isn't, you know, a narcissistic pat on the back. That pat on the back is the encouragement you might need to keep going on the rest of your project. Don't be afraid to take those pauses. Um, and sometimes, Jill, those are divine pauses too because you're pushing yourself and you don't realize you're pushing yourself so hard that as you're trying to get back into that project, you won't be worth anything. You won't have, you'll, you'll sit there and waste two hours because your brain's not thinking, your, your body and your mind aren't together. You know, um, there's something to be said about taking three to five minute meditations in the midst of doing a big project. I did that the other day. Saturday, um, I was writing an article for the New Pioneer. The mountain man was out with a friend, and I was here by myself, and I was writing an article for the New Pioneer, and I, it was really dumping, and it was really going good, and then I, I hit a spot. So I paused. I saved everything. I paused, and I, I used what's called, uh, it's an app called Headspace. It's awesome. And I use that, and it's normally set for 10 minutes, but I bumped it down to three, and and and... You'll laugh when you if you check it out, but I spent some time with Andy, 
Um, he is the voice on Headspace, and uh, I stopped that. I took a time to get a coffee, and I sat back down, and bam, I was able to dump again on my article and finished it. So don't be afraid to take those time. That that's that's separate yourself from those things. If you feel the desire to pause and pat yourself on the back and just take a, a break, understand that when you come back to your project, you will be better and, and more able to continue on in a really good way. Chad, I'm going to try to find that. Jill, I hope that helps. Good morning, Carrie. Um, let me see here. Okay. Ooh. I might be able to see your comment, Chad. More along the line of finishing a line ooh, there's this Carrie. chick on my screen it's talking let me turn the volume down <laughs> all right let me see if I can get to the comments real quick so I can address Chad's hmm let me see no oh there it was All right, Chad's saying now, Jill, good job on starting the project and moving forward. Stay positive on what you do and give yourself praise on what you've done. Amen. Amen. Be kind to ourselves, you know. If you were watching somebody else that was tremendously um, struggling through something and they needed a break, would you suggest that they take a pause and get a break? Sure you would. So give yourself that. All right, here, Chad says to me, Ah, okay. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into put it into practice, and then God's peace will be, I believe, with you. It cut off on me. Thanks for sharing that, Chad. You know, we've got to be kind to ourselves, guys, and we've got to we've got to give ourselves the same treatment that we would we would somebody else it's called compassion grace so don't be afraid to do that projects hard big projects can be hard but taking them in baby steps in bite-sized chunks and pausing and taking breaks taking breaks is a a known thing that helps us to be better people better at what we do um, provide better quality of what we are doing so don't be afraid to take those breaks. Like I, I think I told you before, Michael Hyatt has a, half, a 20 minute nap scheduled into his day that he religiously takes. He takes 20 minutes to just take his brain down and to just uh, rest himself. You know, that's the thing that people did in the past too. And, you know, we, we foo-foo that as being lazy in, in this culture, but it's really not something that's lazy. It's smart. You know, our brains can only take so much and our bodies can only take so much and we continue to abuse ourselves all the time. So don't be afraid. And Jill, kudos to you for pushing into the project and doing what you're doing. Keep moving forward. So what else do you guys have to share? And thank you for sharing that, Jill. That was really good. And sorry I went off on a bunny trail the first time. <laughs> but I think it was good. Good content. Um, we all struggle with these things. We're not, none of us are separate from this. None of us are untouched, unscathed. Every day we have things that challenge us. Every day we have things that, you know, enlighten our lives. And, and those are things you guys can share too. Share your challenges or your, your celebrations and share, share the things that have, you know, brought good into your life. Uh, we can help each other in, in such amazing ways that way. But if nobody else has anything to share, and again, please feel free to share topics that you would like to have me touch on. Um, I'm happy to. Uh, I have a schedule for these videos, but you know what? I'm rolling with it, and if you guys have something that I can fit in between, I'm going to do it. We need to, we need to help each other and progress this year and not be stuck and not end up uh, hitting February and losing all momentum to our New Year's resolutions because although they're New Year's resolutions and, and most people fail in them, you know, you can make them new habits, and, we're, and, and it, can, it can be called whatever you want to call it. You have the ability to... to you know, progress through it and, and make these things happen. And we're going to do it together. So if you guys don't have anything else, I have a funny to share with you. I love this wool sweater. This is a really nice, good quality wool sweater. One of my favorites. And obviously I can't wear it all year long. And it's been pretty warm. And I've 
I pulled it out for the first time the other day and I was so excited to wear it and I wore it and I went out and we were we were out and about doing some errands and I came back and it was really hot in the house and I took it off and when I did my hand went through this huge hole that was in the front of it that I never noticed and I'm walking around not that anybody cares and not that it probably looked any different you know we're, we're rough and tumble sometimes out here see that <laughs> We had a problem with mice. We live in the wilderness. They want to come in in the fall. And some poor sold mice thought that it would use my sweater for bedding. So it started nibbling on my nice sweater. And this is a nice, big, boxy, roomy sweater. So I thought I'd share the funny with you. But in addition to that, I'm going to tell you how I'm going to repurpose this. You, you all have seen the nice little fingerless gloves out there. I always end up, my hands are cold, but I need my fingers to do things, so I end up not wearing the gloves because they're in the way, and and my hands freeze to death. <laughs> yes, mice want the warm, too, exactly. I could get the darning needle out. I'm debating, Jill. I'm, I'm debating because that one hole is very large. I stuck my whole fist through the darn thing. I was so frustrated. And of course it's on the front. It's not like it's the side or anywhere else. It's right smack in the middle of the sweater. So it had to look pretty funny while I was out. But if I decide to repurpose this, I'm going to make fingerless gloves that I can wear and that way I can repurpose this beautiful hem and this just beautiful brown sweater. I'm downsizing anyway. We're selling a lot of things and and going through and organizing my home, um, getting prepared for a move. So, by the way, our home is for sale. If you know anybody looking for an off-grid, solar-powered homestead, we are selling it, and you can um, find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash five acres. And be sure to... Uh, actually, Chad, I make socks. I could... I could produce socks from this. That is a good idea though. This is big. I could do that. Thank you. Um, but if you, if you know people interested, be sure to spread the word, share the link with your friends and family. Um, we are hoping to sell this by spring and, um, we are going to start all over from the ground up with another piece of raw land. I'll share more on that later and I'll share more later on organizing your home. I have a friend that is producing this amazing class that we are going that I'm going to be promoting for her, hopefully upcoming, that will go along with my getting organized in a crazy busy world, which will be coming to you soon as well. Um, but I just thought I'd share this with you. It's always fun to have a project like this to let your brain unwind after you've worked on those big projects. I'm out of my office every day. I, my goal is to be out of my office by 5 o'clock every day so I have the rest of the evening to make dinner and enjoy such things. So make sure you have time and margin in your schedules. Jill says, would you like three methods of using all the parts of the sweater? If so, I will send you the links. Sure, absolutely. I would love to, to see. I've been doing a little research and checking around. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, yeah, share that with me. So Anyway, I just thought I'd share my humor with you. I just thought that was really funny. I'm walking around with this sweater with this massive hole in the center. So, <laughs> uh, nothing like clueless. But there you go. So, I'm going to re be repurposing some things. There are some other wool sweaters I have that they don't fit the way I like them to, but I haven't parted with them because I wanted to repurpose them. So, I will play around. And Jill, yes, I would love that. Um, maybe I'll utilize that with the other sweaters as well. So, anyway, guys... I've taken up enough of your day, and I hope that you have gained something from this today, and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 1030 Pacific Time. Tell your friends, get more people joining us. I love this uh, communication with you guys. So have a fantastic week and weekend, and I will see you next Wednesday. God bless.